After a three-day review, the Holy Bible is available again to students at Volusia County Schools. Christina Quinn challenged the book on Friday for having what she says is sexually explicit content. I wouldn't say it's just to prove a point. Mm -hmm. It is just saying basically what's good for the goose is good for the gander, so we can't pick some and not pick others when they both have similar material. Don't you just hate it when you're forced to face the consequences of your own actions? I know that Ron DeSantis does because the Florida governor just signed a bill amending his own book ban law after certain books that he didn't want challenged were challenged and subsequently banned. Now, the local news report that you just saw gave you one example of how this law blew up in his face, but it barely scratched the surface because the Bible was actually challenged in multiple districts in Florida. And we're now learning that those challenges are specifically why he chose to ultimately amend his own law. But before it even came to this, he tried to pretend as if book bans in Florida wasn't actually happening. Uh, it wasn't a thing, according to him. He called it a hoax. And we talked about it at the time, but back in February, his office put out this press release supposedly debunking the book ban hoax while acknowledging that his book ban was real and kind of a problem. It read, Florida does not ban books. Instead, the state has empowered parents to object to obscene material in the classroom. In other words, we call that book bans, my friends. It continues, still, some have abused this process to object to items including books about Johnny Appleseed, The Giver, and even the Bible. Governor DeSantis is calling on the legislature to fine-tune this process to prevent people from taking advantage of Florida law that is designed solely to remove inappropriate material from the classroom. So, Florida doesn't ban books. They just let conservative parents challenge material that may ultimately result in their subsequent removal from school libraries, but they don't ban books definitely not a thing. It's a hoax to say that they ban books. Also, we should amend this law because too many books are being banned even though there's no book ban, but we don't ban books. Sure. Now, this is a case of him kind of being a victim of his own success because the law is working as intended. The problem, however, is he can't specify which books he wants banned, which namely include LGBTQ plus books and books about racial and ethnic min minorities, because that's obviously unconstitutional. So he was forced to make this law as broad and vaguely worded as possible so that way it can survive judicial scrutiny. But I mean, once you open that door, you open the door to everyone, not just conservative parents, not just fascists. And as a result, the Bible became a target and for good reason, because there's some passages in there that are pretty inappropriate for kids. For example, Deuteronomy 25, 11 to 12 reads, if two men, a man and his countryman are struggling together and the wife of one comes near to deliver her husband from the hand of the one who is striking him and puts out her hand and seizes his genitals, then you shall cut off her, <laughs> you shall cut off her hand. You shall not show pity. Okay, you chop that fucking hand off if she grabs your balls. Proverbs 5, 10, a loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breasts satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Uh, Ezekiel 16, 17 says, You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, the jewelry made of my gold and silver, and you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. I don't know, sounds pretty susy to me. So, I mean, there's talk of masturbation, titties ball grabbing, and we didn't even get into the promotion of violence where God literally murders everyone on the planet with the exception of Noah and his family because he thinks that they're being bad. So murder is the solution to bad behavior according to this book. Like that's something that it teaches, right? Now, maybe you're fine with your children reading this kind of content, but some parents wouldn't be okay with it, which is why school districts were forced to take these challenges to the Bible seriously, because this is the exact kind of inappropriate material that this book ban law was meant to challenge. They just don't like that the Bible is being challenged, and I don't think they anticipated that it would be challenged. Now, DeSantis tried to play it cool back in February and implied that the more banal books like, you know, the Thesaurus and Johnny Appleseed really is what influenced his decision to amend his own book ban law. But his office basically just admitted that the real motivator here for this 
is the Bible. So Brendan Farrington of the Associated Press reports, the Associated Press asked DeSantis office for examples of liberal activists abusing the law, and it provided one, Chaz Stevens, a South Florida resident who has often lampooned government. Stevens raised challenges in dozens of school districts over the Bible, dictionaries, and thesauruses. The change to the law ensures that book challenges are limited for individuals like Chaz, who do not have children with access to the school district's materials, DeSantis spokeswoman Julia Friedland said in an email. She didn't reply to follow-up emails requesting more examples. Stevens, who 11 years ago made national news when he installed a festivist pole made out of beer cans across from a nativity scene displayed in the Capitol, was delighted DeSantis' office singled him out. Quote, when they need to make stupid stupider, they send me up. I'm part comedian, I'm part activist, I'm part artist. I just want a better society, Stevens said. I'm an idiot, but a smart guy at the same time. DeSantis said activist efforts had made a mockery of the original law. Quote, the idea that someone can use the parents' rights and the curriculum transparency to start objecting to every single book to try to make a mockery of this is just wrong, he said the day before the bill signing. That's performative. That's political. So he's basically admitting that the activists who used his own law against him are responsible for his decision to scale it back. That's what I call brilliant activism. That's what I call you played yourself, right? They used the law that you approved of to their advantage. That's just how politics works, right? But unfortunately for Ron DeSantis, this update isn't necessarily going to stop the Bible from being banned because all it does is limit the scope of who's able to challenge books from everyone to parents. But I mean, if a parent with a kid at a particular school district still wants to challenge the Bible, they're able to do that. But now they're just limited to challenging one book per month. So it's still entirely possible that the Bible gets banned once again. So the only real solution here is to just get rid of the law entirely so everyone's happy. Now, even though DeSantis and his office is blaming one activist for abusing his own book ban law, that's actually not true. The article cites PEN America, which is an organization fighting book bans, and they contend that Florida is actually responsible for 72% of the books around the country being banned. So of the 4,349 books that were banned, 3,135 of them are from Florida. Now, even though religious and conservative books are swept up in that oftentimes, it's not representative of most books that are being banned. They say, quote, the majority of books that we see being removed are books that talk about LGBTQ plus identities, that include characters of color, that talk about race and racism, that include depictions of sexual experiences and the most broadest interpretation of that understanding, said Casey Meehan, PEN America's Freedom to Read program director. In other words, the law is generally producing the result that DeSantis wants but because a couple of Bible bans here and there slipped through the cracks, that was reason enough for him to amend the entire law, which is hilarious. But it's not the first time that this has happened because one of my favorite stories of last year involved a GOP lawmaker in Utah named Ken Ivory, who called for his own book ban law to be revised after, uh, guess what book was banned? the Bible. And much like DeSantis, he also claimed that it wasn't really his fault because the law was good, but it was the fault of activists who made a mockery of his law. But listen to how he defends the inclusion of the Bible in schools, despite it containing insensitive materials that his law was supposedly meant to combat. Yes, the Bible is best taught at home. That does not mean that the Bible should be, could be, must be removed from schools. That's a, that's a leap of logic that some have, have uh, inappropriately made. In other words, you know, sure, the Bible contains some porn, a little bit of bestiality, some menage a trois, onanism, but it shouldn't be banned because it's a book that I like. Other books that supposedly contain porn, however, those should be banned because I don't like those books. Understand how it works? Books that I like shouldn't be banned. Books that you like well, maybe we should ban those. But you don't get to pick and choose what porn is acceptable in schools. Either all of it's okay or none of it's okay. But what they want to do is have their cake and eat it too. They want rules to apply only to their political opponents because they're just bad people. And these book banning fascists aren't just bad people because they're in favor of censorship, in particular of marginalized vo voices. They're bad people because this whole war on woke and porn in schools is all intended to distract you from the terrible things that these Republicans are doing. For example, at the behest of construction companies in big agro, DeSantis just signed a bill into law that 
preempts local ordinances passed to protect outdoor workers from extreme heat. So in Miami-Dade County, for example, they were considering a regulation that would require companies to give workers mandatory water breaks and time in the shade during heat waves, and DeSantis just signed a law nullifying that which will inevitably result in heat strokes and ultimately deaths of some workers who work outdoors. And make no mistake about it, DeSantis is responsible for every single one of those workers affected by this law, but he thinks that people aren't going to realize that he's their enemy if he can make other people the enemy. If he can make you believe that LGBTQ plus people or woke teachers are the real enemy, then he wins. It's just a distraction tactic, and anyone who falls for it is a rube who's supporting this fascist at their own peril. But, I mean, that's kind of the way that they play politics, right? They do terrible things behind the scenes, and they prop up a common enemy for everyone else to hate, so that way you don't think, oh, maybe it's them who's actually the problem. But, in conclusion, as dangerous as these fascists may be, fortunately, they're pretty fucking stupid. I mean, we saw how easily... Activists around the country have been able to weaponize their own book bans against them. So, I mean, let this be a lesson to fascists and supporters of fascists. Be careful what you wish for, because it may come back to bite you in the ass one day. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympic. Woke ideology. 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 Woke ideology.